What's doing, everybody? Welcome to episode 745 of First Class Fatherhood. I'm happy and honored, as always, to be here with you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I have got a legendary actor joining me on the podcast today. Billy D. Williams joins me on the podcast today. Billy D. Williams, obviously very, very well known for playing Lando Calrissian in the Star Wars franchise. He made his first appearance in The Empire Strikes Back and then was one of the main characters here, really made the movie happen in Return of the Jedi. He reprised the role later on in 2019 in The Rise of Skywalker. Lando Calrissian, of course, one of the most beloved characters in what has become just a cult following of a film. I don't know if there's a bigger franchise in history than Star Wars and what that has been able to accomplish. Uh, for me, the original trilogy is really all Star Wars is. For, for, for me, I grew up with it, obviously, in the 80s. It was a big, huge thing. You were either a Star Wars guy or a Trekkie. Uh, I was definitely a fan of the Star Wars films. I didn't really get into the new ones that kind of came out, uh, the Phantom Menace and, and the whole bit. And, uh, and I did go see The, the Force Awakens. Uh, just kind of, I know that they're redoing a lot of these movies now from movies that I grew up with, and I, I kind of like the old times. Like I like when they re-release the movies into the theater. I love to re-enjoy. I love to enjoy those movies all over again. So Billy D. Williams, obviously. Lando Calrissian, a classic character from a legendary actor. He's also very well known for so many other films. He starred in Batman 1989. I'll never forget going to see that one in the theater, the one with Michael Keaton, uh, which I think blows away the newer Batmans that they have out there. Also, he, I think my favorite movie that he is in is Brian's Song, which was a TV movie that he did with James Caan, uh, where he plays Gail Sayers. The story is about Brian Piccolo, a, a football player for the Chicago Bears who has terminal cancer. It's one of those tear jerkers, just a great great uh, story of friendship and it involves football. So it was everything that I really enjoyed. And Billy D. Williams plays Gail Sayers so well in the movie. So definitely um, my favorite movie that he's in. And Billy D. Williams has now got a brand new book out. What have we here? Portraits of a Life. You could find the link to the book down there in the description of today's podcast. It is a memoir all about Billy D. Williams' life. He is now 87 years old. So it's an honor to get a chance to have a legendary actor like Billy join me here on the podcast Billy D. Williams is going to be here with me in just a few minutes, so please stick around for the interview. All right, I've had the honor of having so many different actors on the podcast here. Just recently had Ernie Hudson, the Ghostbusters legend, uh, join me on the podcast. So if you go through the archives, you'll see so many of them. And I'm now putting these episodes over on Rumble. So if you want to follow First Class Fatherhood over on Rumble, check me out on the platform over there. I'm moving some of the older episodes over to that platform as well. But I could use the follow. I could use the help over there. And uh, go through the archives, you'll see Matthew McConaughey has been here, uh, actor Josh Peck, Jason Alexander uh, pl played George in Seinfeld. That was such a fun interview. So please go through all the archives and check out all of the great dads, actors that have joined me here on the podcast. All right, and as always, please help me spread the word about today's podcast. Every father in your neighborhood or in your contact list, let them know about the show that see us celebrating fatherhood and family life. You guys know it. Every day is Father's Day right here on the podcast. Here comes my interview straight up with Billy D. Williams. On first Class Fatherhood. First Class Fatherhood. That is where Alec Lace comes in with his popular podcast. And one of the most interesting was on a podcast. Alec Lace interviews high-profile fathers from actors to NFL players with a vision to change the narrative of fatherhood and family life. Joining me now, First Class Father, Billy D. Williams. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Yeah, hi. How you doing? It's an honor to have you here. Let, let me start like this. How many kids do you have? How old are they? Well, I got two, and the one is 62, and one is uh, 50. A any grandkids along the way? I got two grandkids. Uh, one is uh, 13, just turned 13, um, and the other one is going on 17. Well, obviously, you've had a legendary career. If you could take me back uh, 60 years ago there, uh, how, about how old were you when you first became a father, and how did that experience kind of change your perspective on life? Well, I was about 21, 22. And uh, when I, I was waiting for his birth, missed, missed his birth by one day, I always had this feeling that my very best friend was coming. And when I saw him for the first time, I was totally smitten. Um, I received a great deal of love in my own life. Uh, understood love, but I never understood love really understood love until I saw Corey. He, he was, uh, he's my best friend. Yeah, well said. Where, where were you at in your career? What, what, what stage was your career at when you first became a dad? When Corey was born, I was doing a play 
uh, called The Taste of Honey with jo Joni Plowright, uh, Alonso Olivier's wife. What would you say are some, were some of the challenges along the way of, of balancing your acting career uh, while being a dad? Well, being an actor is a challenge. <laughs> no matter how you look at it, it's a, it's a challenge. No, listen, I, uh, I've i been very fortunate. So I've had the, you know, you, you had the usual ups and downs. and uh, But you, you always find a way to work around uh, the negatives and, and or work through the negatives and and have a lot of faith, I guess. Well, you just came out with the book, What Have We Here? Um, what, what, I got the link to the to the book down in the description below so my listeners can tap it and buy a copy. Uh, what can they expect when they pick up uh, What Have We Here? Well, it, it covers my life since from the time I was a little boy. Uh, with mommy, daddy, grandmommy, my twin sister, lady, um, and all of my escapades. You know, I think of my uh, my life, uh, much of my life is without malice. It's all sort of an adventure. I, when I, I usually uh, think of, when I think of my life, I think of uh, J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye. I was that kind of kid, you know, it was just sort of, uh, the kind of uh, naivete of going through life, embracing all of these experiences uh, without malice of forethought. Just a wonderful, interesting uh, uh, life, which is why I decided to, uh, especially at this stage of my life, I'm, I'm 87 now, uh, so I started thinking in terms of legacy. So I wanted to talk about things that I've experienced that I think a lot of people would, would uh, really have a lot of fun uh, reading about. What have we here? I got the link to the book down there in the description below. Were there any uh, parts along the way, looking back through your life, was, was it difficult to kind of revisit some of the challenging moments uh, in your life and get them down on paper? No, not really. I mean, I had a lot of fun uh, going through it. It took two and a half years. But prior to that, I had been working on a, on a over 20 years, I've been working on a coffee table book, um, um, talking about my life through my paintings, which I'm still working on, I'm, I'm, which is what I, 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 I want to do that particular book. Have, have your kids had a chance to read the book? If so, what was their reaction? My kids? I don't know. I, I haven't talked to anybody about it. Well, what would you say, go back to your fatherhood journey here growing up, what, what type of disciplinarian were you as a dad, would you say? And is that different than the discipline style you grew up with? I was mostly a friend. My, my son raised me, really. <laughs> no, I, I never, I was never what you call your traditional dad, really, in that sense. I was always, uh, like, we were buddies, we always uh, having wonderful discussions and uh, wonderful exchanges. Well, what one of the my, I think my, I would say my favorite picture that you did was Brian's song. Uh, I think that was su such a uh, amazing film. I've watched it a, a ton of times. What was the experience like for you uh, uh, getting a chance to play in that movie? And it, I mean, I, I just I'm just asking about it because it's my favorite. So I wanted to get your kind of take on Brian's song. Well, you know, to me that as I've always described it, it, it was an act of love. It was like one of those perfect experiences that come come along once in a lifetime. You know, working with Jimmy, uh, we had a great chemistry, uh, and uh, working with Buzz Kulik, who directed the uh, movie, uh, was like the perfect experience. Yeah, obviously the game has changed. The world of acting has uh, become different, especially the way people are getting discovered now with social media and everything. There's a whole different ways for people to enter in uh, to the acting world. It, it, what kind of advice do you have for parents that might have a kid out there right now uh, that's interested in an acting career? Which way would you tell them to steer the kid? Well, I, I don't. I, I hesitate to give advice to anybody, uh, but uh, I think if you're going to be a creative entity in this life. Uh, I think the, the important thing is to embrace as much as you, you can possibly embrace. Stay open, 
go to museums, read a lot of books, go to, to uh, see a, a lot of theater if you can. Uh, take interest in a wide variety of, of uh, creative expressions. I think that's, it seems to be, it, you know, it's, it's probably if, you, if you're capable, able, is the best thing to do is try to be, try writing besides acting. You know, if you want to paint, draw, those things are really important. But I mean, just somehow to revolve you and surround your life with a lot of great creative uh, activity. Yeah, really great stuff, Billy. And, and I would say, um, obviously, you're very, very well known for playing Lando in, in Star Wars. The series is a cult classic. It's got such a huge following. Uh, what was it like for you to kind of come back into that and reprise the role in the, in the latest like Skywalker movie? Uh, or are you all sick of Star Wars already? But what was it like for you to kind of step back into that role again? Well, it was. I had a lot of fun, especially because uh, I had an opportunity to work with J.J. Uh, uh, Abrams, whom I'm crazy about. So it was a yeah. it was a beautiful experience. Uh, are, are any of your kids or your grandkids are they Star Wars fans or uh, or are they Star Trek fans? What do you got? You got Star yeah, Wars I, fans in the family? Yeah, I, I guess they are. We don't talk about all of that kind of stuff very much. At least we end up talking about lots of other stuff, but not none of that stuff. None of the none of my escapades and my <laughs> my movie career. How was the? How would you say is the transition for you into the role of grandfather? What was that like for you to become take on the role of being a granddad? What was it like? What's the difference between being a dad? I, hopefully, I got a while ago yet. My oldest is just about to be eighteen, but you've been there and done it. So, how was that role taking on grandfather? Well, you know, it was interesting because uh, I kept before I had uh, Corey. I mean, before I had uh, my first grandchild, uh, Finnegan. Uh, I thought, well, no, I, I, I want to be called by my name. Not, I don't want to be called Grandpa. But when I, when I saw him for the first time, I said, no, 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 I'm Grandpa. <laughs> no, I it love hit you like that. I, I love being a grandfather. Well, you're too well, young yet. You know? No, yeah, well, I, I got four kids. My oldest is going to be 18 in like two weeks here. So uh, they're, Get they're, they're getting there on me. Yeah. You look like, you look like you're 18. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's for sure. Yeah, it feels like yesterday I was. So, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I did want to get your take on uh, on all the CGI that's come into the movies now, Billy. And what's your take on kind of how that's taken over a lot of the different aspects of filmmaking? And how do you feel about, like, say, CGI taking on Chewbacca or or getting into other movies now and reprising these other roles using the CGI? What's your take on all that? Well, we're into artificial intelligence now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is just the beginning. So uh, I don't know. It's all uh, it's all the evolutionary process, and uh, you know it, it's normal. All of this stuff is normal. I mean, um, obviously there are an awful lot of people who love uh, movies that have a lot of CGI, um, and uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's part of what is going on in the world of creativity. It, 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 it's funny to look back because I, I remember I, I was a kid when Jurassic Park came out and I will never forget being in the theater and seeing that for the first time. And it was like, oh, my God, like it was like so realistic. And now looking back, it's like, oh, it doesn't really look as real as it did back then. I guess that's how it was for people when they saw King Kong like the first time in the 30s. They're like, wow, it looks so real. You look back at King Kong now, it kind of looks uh, more like Plato and stuff, you know, and, it, and so now Ooh. it's just like the technology keeps going. I, I can remember going all the way back to the 40s uh, when you had the, the Frankenstein movies and uh, <laughs> and the Wolfman and how scary those movies were. You know, and uh, Dracula, they were scary movies. Uh, or even uh, later there was The uh, Exorcist. I, the Exorcist totally freaked me out. I'll never forget <laughs> it. <laughs> It's funny because every Halloween I share those movies, the Boris Karloff and the Bela Lugosi, the, the classics, and and they, they don't look at them as so they kind of we, we kind of have fun with it. They, it. It's not a scary movie to them whatsoever, you know. So well, it, 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 it's so funny because when you see this, 
those movies now, I mean, it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Back then, you weren't allowed to take kids to go see it. Now it's like you can have a, it's a kid friendly film, you know. So a uh, big difference in the way, and that's all due to the way that the filmmaking has changed. So uh, it's it's incredible to see where it's going to go next. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously, you have the book. Uh, uh, what have we here? I got the link to the book down there in the description below. You've had a legendary career. Your legacy in the acting world is secure. What would you say you want your legacy to be as a dad? A loving dad. A wonderful dad. Uh, a fun dad. I don't know, yeah. I, and then, and then the last thing I want to hit you with here, Billy. I, I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice would you have for that brand new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening? Oh, I hate giving advice. Be a, be a nice person. To take good care of your kids. Make sure that <laughs> they grow up uh, with a real sense of uh, awareness and understanding and and adventure. Adventure is important. I, I love the message. This has been an honor for me. Uh, Billy D. Williams, you're a first-class father all the way. Thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time today on First Class Fatherhood. Well, thank you. Alec Lace has interviewed more than 700 dads on his award-winning podcast, First Class Fatherhood. Dads from all walks of life, including Tom Brady, Deion Sanders, Matthew McConaughey, Steve Harvey, Tony Hawk, Eric Trump, and so many more. Find out why First Class Fatherhood has been number one on the iTunes charts. Who these men are as fathers and how they raise their children is far more important than anything they accomplish in their careers. Alec Lace encourages his high-profile guests to share their fatherhood journeys and offer advice to new and soon-to-be dads. Let every father in your contact list know about First Class Fatherhood. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Every day is Father's Day on First Class Fatherhood.